the EM, from Young's Veterans Memorial, it's the ENF Donor Event. Hi! Hey everybody, it's Jim and Debbie and also Jim. Our board chairman, Jim Grillo, is zooming in from Linden, California. Jim, I'm going to turn it over to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Jim. You know, it's really a pleasure to be able to have a little uh, time to talk to everybody that's here tonight. Usually this happens at our Elks National Convention on a Saturday night. We're at some beautiful uh, event center where all of you that give so much to the ENF are uh, able to come together, have fun, enjoy the evening. Unfortunately, because of the situation in today's world, that didn't happen. But Elkdom has uh, entered a new realm. It's called technology. Uh, and it's been a long time coming for the Elks, but I think in the long run, it's going to benefit us very much. You know, I have the uh, honor and the privilege to serve as chairman of the Elks National Foundation. And uh, I just wanted to take a few moments tonight to say thank you, not only on behalf of myself, but the entire board of trustees. You know, we uh, look after that that you give us and what you give us is not only your time your effort and your dedication but you give us the money the money to put forward the programs of elkdom that make it what it is today without all of you giving of yourselves your time your money your financial wealth we would not have the elks we have today because we wouldn't have an elks national foundation you know i grew up uh being told that the Elks National Foundation was the heart of Elkton. So I would just like to say from my heart, from the board's heart to your heart, without your hearts and your giving to the ENF, we would not have an Elks. We would not have an Elks National Foundation. We would not be able to help the veterans that are so desperately in need, the children that need our scholarships we would not be able to put forward the programs that make this order very simply put the greatest fraternal order in the history of the united states it's because of you and it's even more now that we need you we can't gather we can't see each other we can't socialize but more than ever the elks and your local lodges need the support the help of the Elks National Foundation because from those lodges where you live, that they will reach out into the communities and help those people that are so desperately in need. And as you know, in today's world, there's more than ever need of help from those of us that can give it. I just wanna say on behalf of all of the board, on behalf of Jim and Debbie, who give so much of their time to the Elks National Foundation and all of the staff in Chicago, thank you. From my heart to your heart, to the heart of the Elks National Foundation, without you, we would have no heart to give and we would have no Elks National Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm just so happy to be with you. Likewise. And we I'm will, uh, it. we will talk to you I'm soon. Okay. I'm turning it back over to you. Oh. I'm in Linden. I'm all alone out here with Lucia and our kitty cats. We're watching the trees grow in beautiful, dusty, Burn down California. <laughs> so everybody be safe and well. You We're too. Take care. We're you thinking too. of you, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, well, I think we can just end the show right now. I know. That was wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, if we can't be in person to hear that, then it, this is the next best thing, to yeah. be here virtually in the beautiful memorial building and chatting with So Jim. a couple things we should say. We are live tonight, unlike uh, the previous episodes of our summer series, which were pre-recorded. This is live, which means you're going to see us warts and all. Uh, so far, we're off to a pretty smooth <laughs> start. Um, I want to remind you to, uh, to use the, uh, the chat tonight. Um, our colleague, Kate Edsey, is over at the keyboard Hi, monitoring Kate. that. And she will uh, be interacting with you. But also, she might share some questions or shouts out with us. Uh, and so we'll have a chance to communicate with you that way. 
Um, of course, tonight is our donor event. It's for our, our Mali Society members, the people who have planned gifts to the foundation, and it's for faith-level donors, people who have donated at least $1,000 uh, a year, uh, and other special friends of the foundation. We're uh, glad you're all here. Of course, we would have loved to have been in Baltimore. Absolutely, but like I said, I think this is the, a good uh, adaptation to the, what we're experiencing. We're able to be together, but just, you know, through the camera. Yeah, this event has been a fun tradition at the convention since 2003. That was the year we were, convention was in St. Louis, and uh, the foundation celebrated its 75th anniversary that year with a cocktail party, and that thus was born the donor event, and we've done it every year since then, and we weren't gonna let a little thing like a, a pandemic stop us this year. Nope. As we said on the invitation, nobody puts our donors in the corner. That's right. Um, we, we did have a fun uh, evening planned in Baltimore. We sure did. Um, we were going to have our event on July 4th at the actual convention center. It's a beautiful convention center with a beautiful patio, and we thought we might be able to see some fireworks, but uh, we had a whole lineup for everybody, and we were, of course, disappointed to not be able to do that. Uh, the lineup included... We had an Edgar Allan Poe impersonator. That's he wrote right. The Telltale Heart, We Are the Great Heart of Elkdom. It's just, it was a perfect match. Um, and of course, we had a musician lined up because music is an important uh, is an important part of this event. Right, right. Uh, there was indoor, you know, area. There was a patio. It was really, it was we nice. A barbecue. So, but we don't want to dwell you too much have been on that. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, too much on that. It would have been fun. Yeah. And it's always, you know, we try really hard to always do something unique to the city that we're in. Right. So, you know, we wanted to do something and we settled on a movie night because that was something we can deliver. I hope you had the opportunity to watch Oildale and enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, certainly the music of that film uh, was wonderful. And uh, we wanted to share some of that with you this evening. So we're going to uh, we're going to play something for you, a song from the movie. Uh, if you like it, feel free to get up and dance, but don't stray too far from your monitors because we will be right back. Well, hey, y'all, I'm Grant Malloy Smith. I wanted to give a big shout out to the Elks National Foundation for the amazing support that they give to so many people, especially our veterans. But you know, they couldn't do it without you. You're the donors who give so generously and help them do so much for those in need. I am blessed to have had one of my songs in the film Oildale which you're going to see. Besides being a great movie, this film shines a light, a caring light, on what our veterans face when they come home. So now I'd like to play you the official music video from the song that's in the film that I wrote called I Come From America. This song speaks to the American spirit, facing adversity and surviving and thriving. That's what we do as Americans. I really hope you enjoy it. Texas in my eyes I left her but she's still strong in me We broke down in King Man, so we walked to Bakersfield Don't you know the mother who Help me. 
that the dirt will take us in Don't you know, don't you know Thanks again to the Elks and to you, the friends and donors who give so much from your hearts. Hey everybody, uh, I know, I know uh, R.A. and Margie Pickett were probably dancing to that ditty right there because I've seen them cut the rug at our donor event a bunch of times. Are you talking about Robert Anthony? Robert <laughs> Anthony Pickett, yes. Yes, I was certain the A stood for something else. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. Uh, you weren't dancing in here, I'm going to tell you why. Back in the early 90s, the Elks raised $5 million to restore this beautiful building, but they fell a little short of the fundraising um, goal to run air conditioning in the space. So <laughs> it's a little warm in here, and uh, we don't need to do anything to, to heat it up further. That's right. Um, oh, Jim, what time is it? It must be 7.15. Um, so, uh, wonderful soundtrack in the movie. Right. Yes, wonderful soundtrack in the movie. I, I was thinking, like, I really wanted to hear Fog of War, mm -hmm. uh, which I love. And I was thinking, oh, I wish we could get that. But I just watched the film before the, the, the live stream, and you hear it twice in the movie. So I think uh, that was a good choice. Also, in the movie, that song was sung by one of the villains, right? Yeah. So you're kind of cheering against that song, and it was so nice to hear Grant Malloy Smith sing it. Right. Because uh, that's a great song. Right. We didn't want Jesse Ann Jessup winning that contest. Absolutely nobody did. Um, now, if you like the soundtrack, watch your mailboxes uh, tomorrow for an email from us uh, and an offer. If you want, would like to receive this, the soundtrack in a CD, we will send that to you free of charge just because we love you guys. That's right. No shipping and handling. No, no <laughs> fees at all. If you want the soundtrack from Oildale, respond to the email that you get from us tomorrow and we will ship it to you. You've been listening to it for what, six months? I did. Seven I picked months? it up when we were in Colorado yes, we were uh, doing in... our, the road show mm -hmm. for... Uh, for the midday podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, um, so without the film, of course, there would be no soundtrack. Right. And um, it's a wonderful movie. It's a really good uh, movie. We re think it really, the uh, reason we selected it is because we thought it would really sing to the Elks because the themes are, you know, you've got homeless veterans, you've got uh, kids in a crisis, and, and community. Those mm -hmm. are pillars of Elkton. Um, we got a chance a few weeks ago to sit down with the filmmakers. Mm -hmm. right? we, got, we got to talk to Lynn Salt and David Muller um, a few weeks back. So why don't we play that interview for everybody? No, Jim. We have been joined by the Oil Dale filmmakers. We are here with Lynn Salt and David Muller. Welcome. Thank you. Thank it's you. Great, great to be with you guys. Yes. Good to see you guys again. Thank you. Well, well, thank you so much for sharing your art with us. Um, I know our guests thoroughly enjoyed watching the film. Can you tell us what moved you to make the film? Yeah, I think Lynn should start. She wrote the script, so maybe she's the best one to, to say the origins of the, of the movie. Um, David and I have been partners for 20 years, and our tastes are similar. And we both happened to spend time in Bakersfield, California, when we wanted to get away from L.A., a totally different place, 90 minutes away. We would go to the Crystal Palace, and we would cowboy, or two-step dance, they call it. Um, and we both decided we wanted to make a film there someday, and we had to figure out what the story would be. And believe me, we came up with quite a few different stories. One was a Cinderella story, one was, you know, a young girl a singer that makes her way to the Crystal Palace, but they all seemed fairly superficial to me anyway. And David had another project he was working on and I sat at home and I started thinking about my family. And my mother came from Oklahoma. She's a Choctaw Native American and she uh, had a difficult time adjusting to the world because as we know, Native Americans aren't, people aren't used to them being around. That, that isn't the theme of the movie, but the Oklahoma people who came out after the Dust Bowl or during the Dust Bowl, many came to Bakersfield. And there was this feeling of home to me 
David and I had been back in Oklahoma to work on the Choctaw Nation film, and when we got there, I just kept saying it feels like Oklahoma. So when I started writing it, I thought, well, I want to see what a young girl like my mom would do to struggle to make it from poverty into uh, how she handles her life, how she deals with the world. And then I said, I don't have a brother, and I wonder what it would be like to be a little brother, or to have a little brother, I should say. And that's where it started, and the oil fields of Bakersfield. And then my dad popped into it as a World War II veteran, which became Gramps. And my father's relationship with my nephew started to come into it. This is a writer's mind. And then the veterans appeared. Um, when I was going to high school, um, the veterans were many of the young men and women, but mostly men were going to Vietnam. When they started coming back, I was in college and I was just bowled over about how they were treated uh, by Americans who did not understand what the draft was, did not understand what our military do for us, and it was horrible. I mean, they were being called baby killers and spit on, and I kept running to run in front of them and be a shield, which I couldn't do. And I kept thinking, someday I'm going to do something. I don't know what it will be. And I didn't anticipate it being this. But this is my story and my heart, and David joins me in saying to our Vietnam veterans, our World War II veterans, our Korean veterans, and our Iraq and modern war veterans, we see you, we understand you, I'm a military child, we care about you, we appreciate you, we respect you. And this movie, we went very carefully around the edges to introduce the veterans so they weren't the story. And I remember some of the actors kept saying, well, we're kind of in the background. And I went, well, just you know, keep reading and we'll see how it works out. And um, it, it, the, the music, as David could talk to, just sort of came to us, and he will talk about that more, and especially The Fog of War, which was the core song. David and I were literally driving to Bakersfield, and I kept going, I need the right song, and it came on the radio, and David tracked it down, and we got the song, and he'll, he can talk about that more. But really, it's my family filtering through my imagination as to telling the story, and at the very end, if people have already seen it, they know how I have the Vietnam veterans speak from the heart of all Vietnam veterans and all of us who suffered with them when they came home, what it felt like. There's a connection too to the name of the film, Oildale, and the music, right? Yes, there's a big connection. Um, one of the reasons that Lynn titled it Oildale was it's the actually the birthplace of Merle Haggard. <clears throat> For those of you who are country music fans, he passed. We actually wrote a little cameo for Merle in the story because he's from Bakersfield. We thought there was a good shot that he would be in it. But he passed, unfortunately, just a year before we, we started filming. And so we wanted to kind of pay homage to that. And like Lynn said, uh, her, her mother's from Oklahoma. We feel a, a deep connection to Oklahoma. And, and Bakersfield was the end of the Dust Bowl for a lot of Okies during the 30s. So they brought their music with us. And so as filmmakers, I think we wanted to bring uh, an artistic look at, at that sort of genre, the sort of country music, Bakersfield, Oklahoma connection. And I forgot to say that both my parents, my mother and my father, were veterans for World War II, and my dad was in Korea. My dad was West Point, so we were a military family. And I mean, coming out of the military when dad retired to California from back east was, was shocking. That's why it was even more shocking the way people treated the veterans when they came back to, to me, to us. Also, when David and I would go to Bakersfield, we'd put our cowboy hats and cowboy boots on and we'd do two-step. And, and I said to him, I could see veterans, you know, with their crutches. And I kept going, there are veterans here. I can feel them. I could feel them. We didn't know until after we decided to make the movie, and I'd written it when we got to Bakersfield, how much that town supports their veterans. And we even found our first person we went to was Wendy Porter of Wounded Heroes Fund. And I got to tell you, she listened to us. She had some of the veterans read it, who then worked with us on the film, and she said, you go to ask anybody in this town for help, and you mention my name and the Wounded Heroes Fund, and they're going to help you. And they met us halfway, or more than halfway. I mean, the theater, the Fox Theater, the, uh, the oil family that let us use the Gramps' house for six months, we didn't pay a penny. And they did the water, and they did the, the electricity. And I'm going to parallel something right now with you guys, the Elks Foundation, National Foundation, which you guys represent, and the Colorado Elks, which were the first Elks we met, 
it was like the same feeling of a partnership, just like you guys knew who we were once you saw the film especially, and you came toward us and you met us halfway. And we didn't, I'm sorry, we didn't know that your goals or what, your, what you guys were after was to help children, youth, community, and veterans. We didn't know that. But now we understand why you came toward us when you saw what we were talking about. We feel very fortunate to have met you guys. We feel guided. And we feel like there's a reason um, that you're choosing this to show your donors. Obviously, you feel that it's uh, matching what your um, intentions are. Um, and we're very grateful um, to show your donors what it is you're about if they don't remember, if they're new. The older donors, I'm sure, know exactly um, what you're about and you're choosing this film for the right reason. Yeah, it's not surprising that, uh, that you and the Elks eventually found each other mm -hmm. uh, because the story that you're telling resonates I mean, with a lot of people, but especially with, with our organization. And we're, we're, we share your passion for veterans, and, and like you, we see them. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we hope it's, we hope it's going to be a, uh, uh, a lasting partnership. I hope so, too. Thank you. Yeah, on that note, too, I wanted to say that we really set out to make a movie that was um, old-fashioned. We were advised not to use the word old-fashioned, but we always do anyway, sort of hearkening back to a, an earlier time in America when the values were more in place. We wanted to um, make a film that was not controversial at all but spoke to the human heart okay. and um, spoke universally about some of the core values that that we think we we need more of in this country yes. which are people helping people basically you know doing your civic duty sacrificing for one another taking people in lending a helping hand those kinds of values we really wanted to instill and not make it sappy and not make it you know too um, Melodramatic. Right, and, and we, we say this and people smile that we're not Hollywood, we're independent filmmakers, we're both professional directors and we belong to the Guild in Hollywood. We've moved away. They, some people looked at our film and said, oh, it's a period piece. And I said, no, it's not a period piece. They don't have computers, they don't have cell phones. I said, they can't afford them. The furniture is old. I said, Gramps' furniture when they came from Oklahoma is good American-made furniture. And, and, and people in Hollywood don't have any uh, connection to the reality of, of what America is really about. And, and we wanted to show it. And people who live in small towns or in the rural areas who know that people still live out there like this, which is wonderful because they talk to each other, they have dinner together, they, make, they sing songs, they create songs. That's what this movie is about. America, and this is still America. Thank you for sharing such a deeply personal story with us and for, with our guests, for sure. Um, that's what Elks do. They connect with community and, and they have each other's backs and they, have the, the, you know, they help people in need in the community all the time. And uh, we appreciate your work of art and uh, you sharing that with us tonight. Yeah. It's our, uh, it's our honor and privilege to yeah. share it with you. Thank you for having it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is that it? Lynn and David, how about it? Yeah. It was so nice to get to, to meet them when we were in Colorado. Right. I can't believe they have been living together and working together for 20 years. Well, let me tell you something about that. Uh, you know, Megan, my wife, uh, started working from home on uh, March 13th, and I joined her a week later on the 20th. And on that first day, uh, I went out to, the living, uh, to our living room, and she'd already set up at the table. And I decided to set up opposite her. And I, so I put my backpack up there, and I was pulling my laptop out. And she stopped what she's doing. And she looks up, and she says, hey, uh, why don't you go down to the basement? <laughs> so I, I can't imagine you know, <laughs> yes. work, working with your spouse. I just can't imagine that. Yeah, Mike and I also work on different floors. So that works out well for us, as, you know, too. I think it takes a very special couple to be able to have that sort of partnership where you work together, live together. Yeah. And I think for most people, um, working with your spouse would be the opposite of this mural right behind us. This is, uh, some of you are probably wondering, <laughs> this is uh, called The Paths of Peace, and it's by Eugene Francis Savage. Um, the, the, the memorial is an architectural masterpiece, but it's also filled with some wonderful art from oh. some of the greatest artists of the day, sculptures and murals like this one. Um, it's the Veterans Memorial, but this is not a war memorial, it's a peace memorial. If you walk through the archway in the front door, that's inscribed above it, it says, the triumphs of war perish, the triumphs of peace endure. 
And then there's a freeze of the, around the, the rotunda. To the left, it's the path of war, and to the right is uh, the path of peace. And that theme is, is, continues throughout the building. Uh, it is pretty cool. It is beautiful. If you ever have a chance to come to Chicago, please come visit us. Now, I want to talk to you about some people who we hope one day will create a world that's a lot more peaceful than the one that's we've lived in. That's right. Um, as you know, uh, during our events, we usually have our scholar advisory board with us uh, and other scholars. So um, we wanted to at least get a shout out to everybody from our scholar advisory board president, Brandon Dawson. Let's take a watch at this video. Hi, everyone. I hope that you all are staying as safe and as sane as you can be right now. My name is Brandon Dawson and I am this year's president for the Scholar Advisory Board. I just wanted to thank you all so much for your continued support as donors. Every donation you make changes the lives of so many of our scholars and we can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you so much. Brandon's one of our favorites. As you said, Debbie, uh, the Scholar Advisory Board, or the, or the SAB as we call them, they have been fixtures at our donor event the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember uh, one of my favorite events was uh, 2016 in Houston at uh, St. Arnold's Brewery? And uh, the evening sort of ended with, um, toward the end of the evening anyway, Brandon was out there like Russian style dancing at a big crowd of elks around him. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. There's yeah. some great pictures from that event too. We also had uh, Ron Hicks was there as Gran um, Ron and Nancy, and uh, when he was the Grand, and at one point he had this big horn. What's what are those horns called? Do you know? I think it's called an alpine horn. An alpine something, horn, something like he that. Was blowing the horn. It was just uh, as we've said at the top. Our donor events are uh, intended to be a fun evening where everybody can kind of kick back, and relax, and just get to, to know each other. So, uh, what's what's your favorite event? Oh my gosh! So my first event. Not necessarily my favorite event was 2005 Reno. Smoky Joe's. Smoky Joe's. Yeah. That's right, Smoky Joe's. Um, but I have to say, I think one of my most favorite events was back in Reno, 2017, Fly Me to the Lex. That was when uh, the, the attire for the event was cool, cat, casual. <laughs> A lot of you guys didn't know exactly what that meant. That's but right. But that one dude, he showed up. Remember the one guy with like the, the check jacket and yes. the check shoes? He was, yeah. he was he ready was, to go. He was cool, cat, casual. Kate, over there, how about you? What was your favorite event since you've been around? I really enjoyed Fly Me to the Lex, and we did, remember we had a um, Jack from, Jack Geiger from California mm -hmm. showed up in his real yeah. swanky right. duds, taking us back to the Rat Pack. And I think my favorite might have been New Orleans, though, when we had oh, yeah. the late, great Frank Garland there at right. the World War II Museum. Right. That just, it seemed like it was such an, a special experience, but... Really, you know, we get to see people once a year, so I, I'm happy with any place. If, yeah, for if sure. If we ever get a convention back in Chicago, it would be pretty neat if we could pull off an event here. I'll just write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I've been doing recently, Debbie, since you asked, uh, I've been binging uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, I've been catching up on, I fell a little bit behind on our, the other show, not the Midday Minute, our show, but the other show on our YouTube channel is called 20 for 20 mm -hmm. and I caught up recently and uh, speaking of scholars um, these are sit-down interviews with each of the top 20 scholarship uh, recipients the top 20 most valuable students each of whom received at least twenty thousand dollars this year uh, and we have staff members who sit down and interview them and it's just a, a really well-rounded look at who they are yeah, it was a great way to meet them and to showcase them. Be you know, obviously we had to cancel the leadership weekend, um, so it went virtual. And so um, we usually do the filming when we're here together uh, in Chicago for the leadership weekend. So it was our way of sitting down and getting to know them better. Like we said, in their in their natural the nat habitat, the natural right? Habitats, that's right. So what we we asked them to do uh, during those interviews, we asked them uh, to thank the Elks, and we would now like to share a compilation of those messages, those very personal messages to you guys. I would definitely say I love you and thank you so much for all that you do. You guys are really incredible. The Elks know how to connect people and, and really serve underrepresented groups, whether that's veterans or scholars. And I hope to continue my relationship with the Elks to create positive change in my community. Thank you, I mean, not just for this scholarship, but for everything that you all do in this community. And so my message to Elks is just a thank you for 
everything that you guys choose to do behind the scenes that doesn't always get recognized because it's so important and it's really a pillar of, of every community. To the foundation in general, thank you so much for selecting me. Obviously, I hope uh, I can do some of the things that you guys have already done or work towards doing, you know, being part of this uh, service-based community. Uh, we all have the like, same thing in mind. And so I really hope I can integrate myself into that system fast. I've said thank you 18 times, but definitely thank you. I uh, just say thank you again so much and I'm very happy to be a part of this foundation. I am so eternally grateful for the opportunities this has brought me and I'm just like so glad that there is such a beautiful organization like ELTS that like helps so many people and so many different kinds of people. That is just so beautiful. I'm just so grateful for that. Just thank you for this opportunity, first of all. Um, it's kind of crazy just to be able to say I'm a part of this. It's a really big blessing to my life. I want to say first, thank you. And then I also wanted to say that there's a lot in store for me that I have yet to unleash the power of. There's uh, a long journey ahead of us, but we're super excited to really bring forth the Elks family along on our own personal journeys. I just want to say thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. and. The Elks have been very generous with both their time and their resources. Thank you. Like, this scholarship means so much more than you even know. And I just want to thank everyone for helping me get this far and helping me continue my journey because it really, really means a lot. Thank you so, so much, times 10. Uh, first, for the scholarship money because it will help me pursue my dreams, make them come true. I also want to thank you for inviting me into a family that I'm really grateful for. I know Elks is something I want to continue with and give back myself. Elks has given me connections and network and friendships that are priceless. And that's something I can never show enough gratitude for. So, thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for your community, and you know, I've seen that personally with the scholarship and then I think even more important than the scholarship was becoming a scholar. I'm just thrilled to be a scholar and I just want to say thank you. <laughs> Honestly, just like thank you so much. Like this is like the one scholarship I got that was like really big and so I, like it means a lot because then I can actually like not have to worry about like money in college and whatnot. I would give them my sincerest thanks and love I am very grateful to the Elks National Foundation and the entire Elks family. Thank you to my Elks family for supporting me in my journey. First and foremost, thank you. At surface level, you're helping a single student um, attend a, like, such an elite university. But if you really dig into it, it's sort of a representation. You're helping me sort of make strides within my family and future generations that really are indescribable. You've helped me create a sort of ripple effect and I'm sure it's going to have a positive impact not only in my family, but within my community. And I'm extremely thankful for that. <laughs> So there you go, uh, just a taste of what those 20 for 20 interviews are all about. You will see so much more if you watch them. Uh, you get to see the, the kids talking about their hopes, their dreams, what they're passionate about, what they want to do with their careers, um, what interests them. Yeah. Um, and you can see a new episode every Monday at 6 p.m. Central on our YouTube channel. So check them out. I love them so much. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're really good. Hey, how about a shout out to the two newest members of our John F. Malley Society. Again, they have planned a gift to the Elks National Foundation. Thank you to a couple of our regional hoop shoot directors. That's right, Jim and Karen McNitt. Right. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks, uh, thanks so much for your generosity. We really, really appreciate it. We sure do. What's next, Jim? I don't know. Kate, what's happening over there in the uh, chat? Well, I am uh, seeing a lot of comments from um, R.A. Pickett, who is, um, I can always count on the Picketts to comment and respond to my emails. They're just a great couple and great friends of the foundation. Uh, R.A. is a uh, big supporter of the Name Scholarship Program mm -hmm. and recruits a lot of donors in uh, really, I want to say just Santa Monica, but all over California. Mm -hmm. But he shared that his best memory with the ENF was the scholar service trip to Santa Monica, which oh, you got to go yes. on. 
and yep. that um, their first event was the rodeo in Phoenix. That was hot. <laughs> I think that, pre- <laughs> that got us ready hot. for today. Right. Yes, yeah. indeed. We were, just, we were just talking about that um, a, a moment ago off, off camera. Uh, that was the event where one of the rodeo workers was trampled, right? That's right. The ambulance came, he was fine. But it did cast a pall it over, sure did. Right. especially when it had started out so strong with you coming out on Tornado. There's, tornado, <laughs> that's right. There's photos circulating of me on, on Tornado, um, and um, you know I'm waving to the crowd, but it's a carefully cultivated photo, <laughs> like we cropped out the part of the guy <laughs> leading me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was pretty funny. So Kate and I love planning these events together. So right? Kate fun. does all the heavy lifting, but I get to go and give my opinion on things, which is, you know, my sweet spot. And remember when we were like, we have to get Jim on oh, one of the horses. For sure. So unbeknownst to him, he didn't know it. But you were, you know, you're always game for stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah usually. usually. I don't think yeah. you led with the horse's name Tornado because I probably <laughs> would have, that would have been a hard no. <laughs> You know. um, what's fun about that too, though, is when we go to these places, they're always asking, you know, most of the places that we're touring, they're well versed in corporate events and special events. And so they always ask, you know, who's in charge or is there a board chair you want to embarrass? And we wouldn't embarrass Jim Grillo because we love and adore him. Yeah, we like our jobs. <laughs> but <laughs> you, on the other hand, are always. And um, I think it was Austin. We ended up not having a different event, but the place that we did look at originally, they said, we can bring in a bull. <laughs> a live bull and your boss can ride it and I said well I need to pay my mortgage so I'm going to pass on that <laughs> um, by the way we do have a, a comment from a new to the ENF donor world Elizabeth Gamble from Carthage Lodge 1762 and she wanted to comment that she loved the movie although I cried from the beginning to the end Aww. it really hit home as my husband is a multiple Gulf War veteran and my grandfather was World War II veteran and never talked about his service well Elizabeth um, thank your husband for his service please yes. and it's so great to have you and hopefully sometime we will meet in person at an event that's fantastic and again I think speaks to exactly why we thought this would be you know a good movie to show tonight yeah well there's a, a part in the, the movie when um, the, I think it's uh, the, the third veteran, Larry. Is it Larry who joins the, the third veteran to join the, the, the house? And he said, uh, you know, I thought they'd give a damn, but they don't. They don't give a damn about us. And I was, yeah. every time I watch that, it, you know, it hits you here, but yeah. then I also think, well, you, you know, you, you need to meet the Elks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, another comment, too, from Wes and Joanne Stahl. And I know on your take a break, you talked a little bit about why roaming, why roaming. Yeah. and your trip um, in Wes and Joanne are such great supporters of the foundation. We're so glad to have them on our uh, team ENF. Yeah, so for sure. um, hello to them as well. Hi. So I'm just going to sum up uh, my, our trip to uh, Casper, Wyoming for a rib fest fundraiser for the ENF um, with this uh, try to picture the, your favorite thing in the world to eat, whatever it is. And then wrap it in bacon, and that, that was that summarizes the, the trip. It was it was really it was good eating. And the, Wes makes all of the, the ribs, right? Isn't oh, yeah. he like the, they, the main guy yeah, in they, charge? Yeah, they put me in. There was this room. There were so many ribs in there. I'm like, oh my god, there has been a massacre. There's <laughs> ribs everywhere, and it is so, so good. I honestly have not had ribs since then. It, I ate so many ribs. Well, you know what? You, gotta, you drop it while you have the best meal, and then it you really good. walk away until really you go back. For sure. We were talking about uh, scholar, or, um, RA mentioned uh, the scholar service trips, and that, of course, has been a victim of the pandemic. We've had to cancel two of those. We had one right. planned for uh, Wheeling, West Virginia in March, and we were really looking forward to that. Because, we were, because uh, Debbie we were, and I were going to go. Right. I had never been on one, and uh, we were going to go because it was going to be an opportunity uh, to spend some time with Ted Hess um, and also Jim Nicholson. Um, right across the river? Yeah. The Nicholsons? And, yep. Um, you know, and uh, it you know, was a victim of the pandemic. And then, of course, we were going to have a concurrent service trip in Baltimore uh, during, during convention. convention. Right. And, you know, um, what's the outlook for future trips? Well, we have pressed pause on the winter trip because we just feel like that probably makes the most sense right now. So we have a new scholar fellow. Her name is Grace Roebuck. You may have met her on the Midday Minute uh, a couple weeks back. Um, she's looking at all sorts of virtual 
engagement, like, you know, similar maybe to like what we're doing here, but um, uh, so we'll be doing that all throughout the fall and into the winter. And then we think we're going to be able to tip our toe, dip our toe back in the pond for the spring trip. Yeah, right now anyway. we're thinking that, so we'll see. Right. We'll see, but that's what's going on. Um, speaking of the trips, Mary Carolyn Nicholson just chimed in and okay. said, Jim and I enjoyed the movie and thank you for being there for ENF and especially the veterans. Sorry you couldn't come to Wheeling. So yeah. um, that really is disappointing. I know how excited they were yes. too. Yes, yeah. we were super excited. The funny thing about that trip was that Jim and I thought we were going up until like the day before we were supposed to leave or something like we kept saying like yeah, it was the week before but like it, we're gonna, it's gonna happen it's we gonna happen it's gonna it's drive, gonna, it'll, yeah it'll, yeah I, yeah so we all it know what happened. happened the rest yeah. is history and i was actually <laughs> supposed to go uh from from I, we were gonna fly there together and then we were gonna split up and i was gonna drive to charlottesville virginia for uh, a virginia elks training day mm -hmm. um with with ron hicks Right. Um, and then I was going to drive from there up to D.C. to fly home. Um, and all of that was canceled. And everything since. Right, right. So much disappointment, but, yeah. you know, from that, we've adapted. We've, we're meeting people on Zoom. We're doing all the virtual things that we can. Yep. So. Kate, we have anything else that we should acknowledge in the chat? Nothing else that's coming in right now. And... Um, I was just going to say, as disappointing as it is, I'm so glad that we got to offer this film and a unique experience for our donors this year. Since we couldn't meet, I hope that everyone had their own popcorn and favorite beverage. Well, as they said in the movie, sometimes you got to turn lemons into lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> I actually don't think they said that in the movie, but they should have. They could they should, have. They could right? have, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, all right. Well, maybe we should start winding down then, right? What administrative stuff do we need to take care of? We will send an okay, email. Okay, buses leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real great <laughs> thing about this event, that there is no busing. We don't have to worry about transportation. We don't right? have to worry about transportation. Everybody got here on their own. <laughs> Um, I didn't have to worry about that. You guys didn't have to worry about that. So tomorrow I will send an email asking about if you'd like a CD and if you would just let us know. We'll get that in the mail. Um, first just contacting the filmmakers that you heard from and we'll then we'll get that in the mail and we hope that you enjoyed it and we're sorry we missed you but we're so grateful for your support. So grateful for your support and we hope to see you again in Tampa. And where can they catch the Midday Minute if they want more of us? They, on YouTube. YouTube, every Wednesday, Wednesday at 2, 2 p.m. Central. And this is really the official end to all of the convention programming we've been doing all summer. It's been, uh, you know, I, I talked a little bit about this. I don't remember if it was last week on the Midday Minute or on Facebook Live, but it seemed like, you know, when, when convention was canceled and we thought about doing this, it just seemed in comparison that it was going to be oh, yeah. so easy. So easy. Easy breezy. Yeah, this, we'll do that. That sounds great. Well, it was its own kind of grind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, a little it's different, been, a little more spread fun. out. Yeah, it's been fun. It's yeah. been great to show off the building. We've tried to give you different views. Um, it's a wonderful building if you've never seen it. Right. Um, and the hopefully next time you're in Chicago and we can't travel again, uh, you yeah. will check it out. All well, right? Are yeah. we done? I think we're done. I don't even want to say goodbye. How do we say I goodbye? I know, I know, I know. Well, till next time. Until next time. Until next time. Thanks for tuning in. Yes. And thank you again for all you do for the foundation. It, uh, you really are. I mean, we are called. The foundation is known as the great heart of Elkton. But the truth is, Elkton's great heart is all of you. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night.